Where has the time gone? I mean, just like that snap, New Year's Eve is upon us. Fortunately for you, December 31st is gonna be unlike any other that you've had. Let's do at home, New Year's Eve, with me virtually, walking you through every step of an incredible seven course dinner, two canapes, two cocktails, I'll make sure there's some bubbles in the cocktail, and we'll wrap it all up with some party favors to ring in the new year. Cocktail time. Dark and stormy. It's dark and butter stormy, I think is probably the best way to describe this. So a lot of you are fans of Harry Potter. If you remember the movie, there was the butter beer. This literally has that same kind of flavor profile. What have we got going on? We've made it super easy for you. In this jar, you have Canton Domaine ginger liqueur with Gosling's rum, along with it caramel, but a real special caramel. It's been infused with fresh ginger. Okay, so that's ready to go in the container. We've got the great Jamaican ginger beer, the one and only, the bad boy. So you'll get two of those. You'll get yourself a lime. So the most important thing when making this cocktail is the first, the fundamental, is the cutting of the lime. So you can see how I'm cutting around the lime and leaving the core, okay? We're going to take the core, cut it in half, drop the two inside. The remaining lime cheeks, you're gonna take your, and you're gonna go right around the edge. Yes, the juice is running on the outside and the inside of the glass. Do it again for number two, because we're making two. And what a better way to start a dinner than having a cocktail. All right, so there you go, that's listed in. And then you're gonna load up with ice. And when we say load up with ice, we're talking like load it up. And don't worry, you're gonna be able to have a little bit of a top me up when you make this cocktail. So look, you got that going on. Do you take your contents? You actually take your ginger beer first. Pop that, you're gonna go one. Wow, look at that. Okay, and? Gonna go one, two. Really important to get everything out of that jar at the bottom. Look at that. Grab yourself a spoon, or you can be super cool and be like, you know, chef in the kitchen, late at night, can't find a spoon for the, a spoon for the life of you. So you just use a chef's knife. It's really important to give that stir up. Look at that. Hold on, let me check. Butter beer, ginger beer, the dark and stormy butter bash. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed that cocktail. Pretty stellar. Remember the recipe. Let's move on to canapes. Little bites. Kind of get the palate cruising here. So in the kit, you've got number one and number two. In number one, it's straightforward. Inside here, some of the XO sauce done with chili threads. XO sauce, abalone, dried shrimp, dried abalone, done with ginger, garlic, a touch of hoisin. This is a fermented sauce. On top is the garnish, the chili threads. I'm trying to minimize the amount of plastic we're gonna be doing for you. Inside the container, you've got two eggs. 
all right? You're going to need, for presentation, something long, a ramekin for the sauce, and some salt, all right? Slide over to the second canapé. We're going to be doing a crimson eggplant. Inside this container, we have the nam pla. This is fish sauce done with orange juice, uh, lemon juice, lime juice, touch of soya, brought to a boil, reduce, citrix clear, it looks absolutely divine. A Little bit of vegetable oil. This is the shrimp farce done with red Thai curry. Little panko breadcrumb done with gochugaro, some cilantro, and then inside this little wrap up, we've got for you three little eggplants that I've gone ahead and already pre butterflied So let's get into it. Take a little demi tasse spoon, go to your farce, grab a little bit of the farce, and you're gonna just tuck it right in there like it's a sandwich. Straightforward. I'm gonna do number two. While you're doing that, you wanna get your pot of water to a boil on the stove top. Won't take long. And then we're gonna to slide to number three on the eggplant. There we go. Pop that to the side. Take your breadcrumb mixture, pop it into the lid that came with the eggs. All right, over here, you got some vegetable oil. You're just going to take the vegetable oil and dab or moisten the surface of the three pieces of eggplant. Why? It's just gonna be a very quick little breading technique. Look at that. Isn't that great? There's one. There's two. And there's three. Okay, and you pop that to the side. So, you are ready to dive into, there's the non plat. You're going to take some kosher salt. We didn't include it in the kit, so you're gonna to need to find this yourself. And if you don't have any salt in the house, well, it's time to give up. It's time to give up in order to take it. No, everybody's got salt, right? So you just wanna put that down. What are we gonna use that for? We're gonna use it for the eggs, right? See that? We're gonna lob the tops off of them. They're gonna be little dip in eggs. Little pro tip to get your egg in so it doesn't crack. Drop it on a spoon, put it in nice and gently. Set a timer for five minutes. That timer, it's going right now in the head. Clickety click. Five minutes happens so quick. And like that, five minutes is up. So let's check it out. The eggs are here. Again, gently lift the bad boys out and put them onto a cloth. Now, while that is being done, you're gonna drop your water to the side and you're gonna throw a frying pan on for your eggplants for the canopy. Because naturally we wanna have everything ready at the same time, right? So remember the oil that you got to moisten up the eggplant? Drop that into the pot. You've got your egg, these on the side, we're gonna to come to them in a second. Let's do the machete action. You've got your eggs, you've got your knife, you're literally gonna lob its head off. Ready, three, you have to be confident about this, there's no messing around here. Three, two, look at that. Look at that jiggly wiggly in there. Look at that, that's so gorgeous. Wow, I mean, I've impressed myself. And there we go, there's number two. And then all you're gonna do is just take your XO sauce, drop it on top, do another one, drop it on top. You don't need a lot. And this, don't throw it out, keep it. Trust me, once you try this, take your little demi tasse spoon, tuck it inside. Are you getting the reason why you need salt in the house from now on? It's not for seasoning, it's to hold the eggs up. Another spoon on the side for the non pla. Guess what, while we've been mucking around there, the eggplants are ready to go in. You never put anything in a frying pan unless the pan is warm. So one, two, three, down in the frying pan. Clean up the mess you've made. And we are going to quickly fry these bad boys 
they're going to take about a minute and a half. Now the trick is, like everything that you cook and saute in a frying pan, don't move it. Leave it alone. Watch how quick this is. Poof. All right, let's have a little flippy. Oh my God, look at the color. Isn't that gorgeous? Give it another flippy there. There you go, try to get it in the oil. As you can see, you don't need much. Now, if your concern is that the shrimp paste inside is not gonna be cooked through and through, you wanna be over a medium high flame, three minutes in the pan, in order for it to cook fully through. And as you can see, it's very quick in terms of getting it going. That's it. Three minutes is up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cocktail, can of paste, head to the other room. But my goodness, make sure you turn your frying pan off. Don't be coming back to a smoky kitchen. See you in a minute. I hope you enjoyed the cocktails and the canapé. Let's get right back into the entire dinner now. As you recall, you packed everything in the fridge. So head over and bring out box number A, container A. This is the, going to be the cooking vehicle and let's open it up and check out what's inside. So the first course is a bread course. And this is French baguette, toasted, nice and crispy. It's done with a white truffle labneh. Garlic confit, means to cook and it's in oil. So garlic confit and pickled tomatillo. You've got a container of olive oil and four pieces of French baguette. We don't want you to fill up on bread, do we? So just four. What are you gonna do? You're going to take these bad boys and you're gonna take your olive oil container and you're gonna run it all over the bread. Once you've dumped it all over the bread, you wanna flip it over. You're going to set your oven to broil mode, high. Once it's up and running, you're gonna take this bad boy, you're gonna slide it in, and you're gonna toast it nice and golden brown on both sides. When you're done that, head back to the table, make sure you have a plate. In this case, I'm using a chunk of wood that I got from the hardware store. All I did was blowtorch this and oil it up, and I'm gonna be doing my presentation on there. Let's head to the broiler, toast this bad boy up. Oh, thanks, Pratik. There you go, it's already toasted, ready to go. So look it, it's gorgeous. It's warm through and through. You don't pop it in the oven. Pop it under broiler in the oven, toast all the sides. And you can see the oil's pretty much gone. Next stop, white truffle labneh. I, I just gotta say, this is like super generous. You're gonna get less than this, okay? This is like right, right out of control. Because honestly, for the two of you, you only, need, you only need that. So ready? Down you go. Give a little slather. We've got garlic cloves. And you know, don't worry that you're gonna have halitosis breath. They're not, not with garlic cloves that have been cooked in their own oil, meaning actually in this case it's olive oil, they are not going to be strong, all right? So there you go. And then we're gonna put a bit of the pickle juice down. Lift your bread. Go one, two. One, two. First course, Stitz Vegas. Crispy toasted French baguette, pickle tomatillo, garlic confit, white truffle labne. Yum, yum. I hope you nibbled on that bread because you don't want to go put it on the table and not eat it and think it's a bread course. The bread's warm, so I hope you enjoyed it, had a nibble, and maybe you kept a little bit on the side. Let's dive into container B or course two. These are heirloom carrots. Did I say hair or hair? 
heirloom carrots. Heirloom carrots. These are roasted, looking gorgeous. Let's look at what we have in the container to make this whole dish work. Pulled duck confit. Hickory smoked feta. Pickled cranberries. Lemon olive oil balm or dressing done with grainy mustard seed. Eggplant dust. This is like a little secret weapon, like KGB style. We take eggplant, slice it thin, pop it into our smoker, smoke it, and then after that we give it a big fry up and then we throw it in the dehydrator for three days and you're left with hickory smoked a la vegetariana with a caretto. Totally amazing. So this is a quick assembly dish and you wanna go ahead and grab your dressing. Take your dressing and just knock a little bit in. Now you're thinking to yourself, what do I gotta put the dressing in there? Well, you kinda wanna get the carrots all nice and gooey-ooey and coat it up. And you're just gonna haphazardly lay your carrots down onto the plate of your choice. As you can see the dish here, I've got so many, I just love plates, right? I mean, who doesn't love plates? Love them. So, and you know, chef's prerogative, right? Have a nipple. Ooh. Next, pulled duck confit down on the plate. You've got enough for two plates. If there's somebody in the house who isn't part of the dinner, you might want them to look away at this point. We're going to the next part. Pickled cranberries. Then come back to the dressing. Napiage or just baste down onto the plate, a good solid dribble action all the way down for the dressing. And next will be the feta. Good healthy dose of the feta going down. Hickory smoked. I got I gotta try it. It looks so good. Mmm. Love it. And then finish with the eggplant dust. Now to get that to shake beautifully, you gotta shake your whole body. You looking at my face? You seeing that? Shake, shake. First course, not out of control. Carrots, hickory smoked feta, smoked eggplant dust, pulled duck confit, lemon olive oil balm. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the carrot course, course two. Moving into course three, Finn Hattie. That's Scottish. It's a classic soup. It's a chowder. This is done with smoked haddock fingerling potatoes. You're gonna go to the fridge. You're gonna pull out container C. There's one container there for you, okay? More than enough soup for the two of you to share. These are your bowls. Whatever bowl you wanna use, no problem. And you're basically gonna take this bad boy. You're gonna head over to the microwave. You're gonna pop it in the microwave. You can leave the lid on, you can take the lid off. It's a paper container. So good. You're gonna to go to power level on your microwave. Might be the first time you're doing this. You're gonna go down to 70%. You're gonna set your timer to three minutes. That's gonna be basically lava, all right? Back in a second. Three minutes, here we go. Oh. Let's see what's happening. Piping hot. Check it out. Can you see that? So look, it's straightforward. This course, take a spoon, go in, and transfer your garnish between the two. There's really nothing else to do here than what we've got going on. A little bit more there, and we're gonna go one, we're gonna go two, So good, so good. Smoke haddock chowder, or as the Scots like to say, Finn Hattie. Incredible soup. Perfect time of the year to have it. Enjoy.
What did you think of that soup? Wasn't that epic? The Fin Hattie, course three. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you know why the menu's called Stitz Vegas, because you can only get that soup here at Next in Stittsville. I hope you enjoyed it. We're moving into the next course now, course four. White truffle risotto, done with wild mushrooms, along with the white truffle, the risotto, and I wanna walk you through all the elements. So you've gone to the fridge, you've pulled out container D1 and D2. Let's go through it. So in this container, you've got a number of elements. Inside here, you have your wild mushrooms. You've got a container of olive oil with some truffle oil in here and malden salt. Fresh green peas, chlorophyll. Gonna go in at the end and we'll talk a bit more about that. Lots of butter, gonna need that. Over here, in this container is the stock. This is basically a beef stock that we're going to use, lightened out, that we're gonna to use to continue to cook off the risotto. So how do we do all of this? You're going to take a frying pan. Now, normally I just use like a little sauce pot to cook it, but I want you to see what's going on in the pan. So I've got this over a medium heat. So you're just gonna take a little bit of the oil and you're gonna drop it down in the pan. Oh, I see the smoke. Good thing the alarms don't go off here. Woo! Okay, down we go. Gonna bring that temperature down a little bit. Okay, we're not sauteing rice here. This is Italian, so we're going in with the stock. Woohoo! All right, so basically, what you wanna do is, you gotta be honest, you're gonna be a little lighter on the temperature there, okay? So what you're gonna do is, you're going to work the stock into the rice. Now, if you try my rice as it came, just grab a spoon. It's got a little bit of a crunch. And that's great, you wanna have that. You're going to drop your butter in now. It's cubed up and ready to go, slide it around. Okay. And you wanna keep mixing your risotto around. Now, in the rice, when I par cooked it for you, I grated some Parmesan cheese over the top. So that's already in. So you wanna keep the edges cleared down. Don't have the rice drying out on the side. Bring my flame back up a little bit more. The whole idea is to make a lot of noise so people think you're actually cooking, okay? So we're gonna come with a bit more stock. You can see, I've already gone through half the stock. It's quick. There's no messing around. And what, what would be the key characteristic that you don't want to have in a risotto? Porridge. You don't want porridge. So you want to have sufficient heat that you're cooking away the liquid while you're remaining with the rice. Now you want to push it through. It's that action of labor, of working the rice that is lifting the moisture out and leaving us with all flavor, all love, just damn sexy stuff. So we are almost there. To me, it's done. Now, chlorophyll, the peas. I wanna saute them off, throw them in right at the end. Another mix up. So you can see how the moisture has come away now and the rice is starting to like come through and you can physically see it right into the spoon there. Right? Does it look like rice pudding? Don't say it, it's not rice pudding. That's a whole other action, all right? So grab your mushrooms out of the microwave. You have your white truffle oil, olive oil, malt and sea salt action. Let's plate up. That's it. That is gorgeous. So you're going to portion equally between the two of you, unless maybe you're kind of like, man, I don't know, Blackie, I think I'm gonna keep that for later. So portion to what size you want. I think we've got a like completely, you know what they call this in our culinary world, we call this Canadian precision cooking, CPC. When chefs are working and we're producing food for 100 to 1,000 people and we get within a cup, that's Canadian precision cooking. And here we go, the mushrooms are going down. Now, the mushrooms 
also have guanciale, the cheek of the pig. Oh my God, look at that. And that's guanciale, courtesy of Mr. McKenzie from Seed to Sausage here in Charbot Lake. Look at this, oh my gosh, look at that. That looks so gorgeous. Now, to finish off, take your spoon. The Malden salt is at the bottom. If you're not familiar with Malden sea salt, it's kind of like a finishing salt. So we're just gonna go down with the oil now. Mushroom, white truffle mushroom risotto with guanciale and green peas. Hope you enjoyed the risotto. Course four, out of the way. We're moving into course five. You're gonna head to the fridge. One container, container E. One of my favorites. My wife introduced this to me years ago. Chicken schnitzel. Love chicken schnitzel. Not veal schnitzel, chicken schnitzel. So this is a chicken breast. You can see this gorgeous crust. In the container, you've got some vegetable oil to fry it. So just quickly while we're here, we've got a pan on, medium high heat, Teflon coated. We're gonna drop our oil down and let that go. Our garnish, beet stained onions. On top of it, we have a caper butter sauce to go with it. Here is the schnitzel. You basically have two pieces. All you're going to do is take these bad boys and you're gonna drop them down into the oil. Just scribbling in the little back there. You can hear it going and going. So again, bring your heat up now a little bit more. I want to be full on, container out of the way. This is a quick dish. I'm gonna grab your plates and bring them in. You're left with the garnish and your sauce. So to heat your sauce, pop your lid, open your microwave, power level, 70%, number seven. And this one, you're only gonna need about 30 seconds. Okay, go. So, nice and low and slow. We're gonna have a little peekaboo here. With the schnitzel, obviously it's about getting it crispy. So we don't wanna introduce, that was vegetable oil by the way, we don't wanna introduce any other fats. Don't be putting butter in. You know, if you wanna grab a lime or a lemon from the fridge and give a squeeze at the end over the top, you can do that. You will have enough acidity in the sauce that I've made, which is a caper butter sauce. There it is. And then some of you are asking, you know, I'm like, is that it? That's all we're gonna do? Well, you already had starch in the last course. It's not about having, you know, veggies and starch to every single course. It's just about keeping things simple here. So, plates down. Honestly, my, my mind is racing and it's saying, you're ready to turn, Blackie. So let's have a look. Oh yeah. The thing about these little portable burners is if I can do this on a portable burner, you can cook it just as sexy at home on your regular stove. Because these things are temperamental little guys. I've got it basically at a medium flame right now. So again, the chicken has been pounded out. It's not going to take long. Literally, what am I talking about here? This is about three minutes, no more than that. Get this from A to Z. We'll continue to let that cook. The oils that are in the pans we're not going to use. You can see they've gotten quite dark their color. And that's coming from the paprika and all the other elements that are in the herbaceous that are inside the crust. So, Honestly, I don't think we're, we're, we're like less than a minute away from this being done. This is when you can probably crack open that glass of, glass of bottle of wine, uh, if you haven't already done, I'm sure you have. And you wanna just come on in, have one more quick look again. Oof, that's so good. Let's see that again. Here it is. Oof, 
Look at, see how all the bubbles are just oogly googly on there? It's great. So, let's get a little bit of room here. Whoa, I nearly lost it. There's one. There's two. Kill your flame. Now, we'll try to make sure that's a little bit more even for you. So just to make sure that this is good for everybody. Now, look, that was like three and a half minutes. It's fully cooked. It's ready to go. So one down, two down. Grab a spoon. Your butter's nice and hot. Splash that over the top. You can see the capers that are in there. And you're going to finish with this bright color of the beet stained shallots down on the plate. Chicken schnitzel. Course six, head to the fridge, straightforward, F1, F2. You wanna bring these two containers. What do we have going on here? Braised beef short rib with a ginger snap crust. You know, my wife has been making ginger snap cookies for years and now at 55, all I do is come up with different ways to put them into every course, because they're so darn good. So let's talk about quickly, we'll go through this dish. In this cup. You've got two chunks of beef short rib with the sauce ready to go. Simple. Open up the microwave. Pop it in. You're going to set to 70%. You're going to set your timer to three minutes. Go. Over here on a burner on the stovetop at home, you're going to go to a medium flame. You're going to open up the container and let's go through it with what we got in here while the beef is cooking away and the pan's heating up. You got my ma magic? So, oil for cooking the veggies. Ginger snap crust. Mustard sour cream. This is used as a coater with the ginger snap crust to cook it, stick it to the beef. Israeli couscous and the vegetables. So, pop your lids off of everything. All right, so. Gonna take the oil, pop it in the frying pan. You honestly only need about a quarter of what's there. We mo we'll make sure you don't get extra vegetable oil, okay? So, bringing that up. Hopefully you've brought two plates. Look at these gorgeous things. These are lily pads. These are from Jengala Kermit from Bali, Indonesia. Back in my life, one of my many lives when I lived and worked in Bali, Indonesia. These were these gorgeous plates that Jillian and I picked up just as we were heading to the airport. They're gorgeous, look at them. They just look like Willy Paz, I love it. So, with that little story, the pan's hot and ready to go. In we go. So the shallots are raw. Everything else is kind of, everything's blanched, ready to go. So, sauteing off the vegetables. You're gonna to wanna to have a dish to the side. What's the dish for? for us to do this coating. So veggies are cooking out. Not that far away on that. The veggies are done. When the beep goes off, grab your Israeli couscous, pop it into your vegetables. Pop open, bring out your beef. Look at this, it's piping hot. It's not nuclefied, it's just nice and hot. Okay, remember the spoon water. Why? Just because it's gonna make things quick and easy. Take your sour cream mustard mixture, pop it over the top, and that's literally acting like a glue for your ginger snap crust, and then just pop that over the top, and that's it. Now, some people might be like, well, could I put that underneath the broiler and toast it up? No, don't. Head back over here. We're gonna pop our veggies down. You can kind of go everywhere you want. Keep them in a bit of a cluster. Come 
line up. There's the sauce. It's a foie gras reduction done with demi glace reduction, beef choux, butter, off to the races. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna head to the dining room and enjoy ginger snap crusted short rib of beef. Wow. Wow, you've made it. You know what it happens when you do a seven course dinner. This is a seventh course. Is This is your reward. This is your treasure at the end of the golden rainbow that you've done and you've made it to the end. And I gotta share with you that I hope you figured out there's only one container left in the fridge. Course G, bring the container out. And don't forget that ice cream we handed you in your hand when you came to next to pick it up. Here it is, the cherry kirsch ice cream. That's not going in the microwave. I'm gonna put that down right there with the plates. You're gonna come over here. Let's have a look and see what we got for you. So this is a sweet potato apple tort. One, two, done in a little brioche tin. Fresh apple inside, sweet potato based. We have a caramel sauce to go with that. Apple crisp crumble. We got some crushed meringue and blueberries. So. How do we assemble this course? Open the microwave. That's right, that's what you're gonna do with the lid. You're gonna pop that in like that. In you go. 70%. This is cake. This doesn't need much. This is 35 seconds, people. Okay, open your other tins. One, two, three. Now, if your caramel sauce was stuck in the fridge, you can see it's pretty Claggery would be the English word I would just best describe for that. It's pretty thick. We're gonna wanna thin that out. And it's pretty simple way to do it is to just heat it up. Ice cream's popped out. Remember your, uh, your rights as a chef. Sample. Oh my God. We like, it's a whole bottle of Kirsch in here. Like if you don't get a buzz, you probably already got a buzz. I mean, you've had a bottle of wine, We've had a cocktail. Now we're gonna finish off with something else here. So the cakes are out. Little warm, not piping hot, a little warm. Caramel sauce, take the lid off in the microwave, 70%. Let's go to 20 seconds. Put your little plastic lids to the side. Tuck that all over. There we go. Let's count that down. Presto. Cooking with a microwave. I love Michael Blackie. Now look, it, it was all kind of thick. And look, it's perfect now. Ooh, that looks gorgeous. So what are we gonna do? I don't know why I put my spoon in there. I think it's the kirsch and the ice cream. It's just got me going. So look, just go boom, boom, boom. That's awesome. So. Crumble. Go with your blueberries. There we go. And now we're gonna finish with the ice cream. Woof. What a way to finish the night. Definitely don't be watching TV when you're eating this thing. You want full attention on this. Sweet potato, apple, tort, crisp, salty caramel, Kirsch cherry ice cream. I mean, guys, it doesn't get any better than that. Enjoy.